Hi guys. Happy Friday. If you're watching in the replay, thanks for joining me. I'm going to take a few minutes to do a couple of technology things. See if I can pull this up. Um, one thing I wanted to see if you guys are able to share this video. Because I do my videos in my group page, I don't know if it's possible to share these videos. So if you guys would be so awesome and experiment with me. Hi, Gina. See if you can share it. See if it, if the privacy settings um, will allow you to share. I'm trying right now and I don't know. There is a share button, Shelly. Yep, I see it, but then I don't know. Let me know, you guys. See if you can share it. Because I would like to be able to share it over on my other Pink Buckaroo page. And I'm not sure I can do that. So, see what you guys can do and let me know in the comments. Anyhow, I hope you guys are having a great day. See, I left myself a message. Share. I want to see if we can share this video. So, give it a try and let me know. Hello, everybody. Wow, we've got a lot of people. There's no share button, Darcy. When I click on the video to make it full screen, I see a share button. Oh, good, Shelly. Thank you. Hi, Patty Joe from New Jersey. Gina, you sent an invite. Okay, cool. Thanks. Doing a little experimenting here at the beginning. So those of you who are watching in replay, I apologize. We, sometimes we just got to try these technology things out. Today I'm doing Party Panda. He's so cute. He's the most popular thing in the celebration catalog. I don't know that officially, but I think it is. That's what I'm seeing the most of. And I'm wondering how many of you already have Party Pandas. It's super cute. If you're not familiar with Celebration, Party Pandas is one of the free sets that you can get with a $50 purchase. And there's three adorable little pandas in it. Oh, I see lots of hearts. Yep. I know. They're stinking cute. I know. They're the best. When my oldest daughter was in about fifth grade, she was obsessed. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Trisha. She was obsessed with pandas. Obsessed. And so... I mean, she was only obsessed with them for like a year. And so then now I'm always like, look, Ellie, a panda. And she's like, whatever, mom, I'm totally over pandas. So anyways, I still think she loves them, but she doesn't. But when I saw this set, I thought of her. All right. So before we get started, let's do a couple of things. Um, let me tell you about two classes that I just put on my blog. You probably saw the bubble over. Here it is. The Bubble Over, Bubble Over, is that what it's called? Yeah, suddenly it doesn't sound right. The Bubble Over class, um, class to go, that I just listed on my blog yesterday afternoon. It is six projects using the stamps and framelits. The class to go also includes these. You have to have these, right? I mean, you have to have these cute little things. Um, so the class to go includes these. It includes the twine. And then all six make and takes. If you haven't done a class with me before, I just know that I um, am very particular. Look, see, this is what's in this one. I wasn't able to open it on the the first video I made. Well, I didn't even try. I guess I should have. Um, <laughs> there's some root beer candy in this one. I take these classes very seriously. I pack them as best I can. I do all the scoring, punching. Um, I do all of that for you. And um, anyway, this class is a little bit over the top. You'll need um, an aqua painter, a heat tool, some embossing powder. Um, it's a really fun class, and I and I kind of broke away from the what everybody's using, the Bubbles and Fizz designer series paper, because I wanted to do something different. I wanted it to really look different and be somewhat masculine. And I've had a couple of questions about these. Hello, they're beer jelly beans. I mean, come on, seriously. And I actually found them on walmart.com this morning for someone, so they are readily available, made by, made by Jelly Belly. Okay, so that's class number one. Um, over on my blog, if you hop over there, you'll find the project sheets for today. And there are, there's links here for you to see these two classes if you want more details. And they'll be, it's all over my blog too. So that's the first class. And then the second class is the Easter class. And you may be thinking, okay, hold up. It's not even Valentine's Day yet. But 
I have to get this out to you in time for you to have time to make your Easter treats. And um, Easter is, I think it's the first Sunday in April. And these will ship out the first week of March. So that will give you a month. So that's why it feels like it's way early because it is. But I have to give you guys time to register and then time for me to order, pack, ship, and for you to get them. So the feed is jittery, Patty. Um, well, let me know, guys. The replay usually will fix any of that glitches, any of those glitches. Um, so anyway, this is the Easter class. It's the Hello Easter stamp set, some jewels, and this lovely um, lemon lime. April 1st, is that right, Shelly? I knew it was right at the beginning of April. Um, lemon lime twist ribbon, that's what's included, and five projects. Um, and this little Easter bunny, he's so cute. We just got rid of all of our 4-H bunnies, so I'm I'm feeling sad about our bunnies. And every time I see the stamp, I think about our sweet little bunnies. But anyway, we won't go there. I don't want to be sad. Um, anyway, five projects, the stamp set. There are four options, of course, with this class, too. Um, and again, it's linked over there on that PDF. Um, the PDF is two pages, three projects, all the products, and it has the measurements and things that you'll need if you want to recreate what we're doing today. Um, these are over at my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, and down here at the back, you'll see the three important links that you need. Joining my team is probably the most important thing you need to think about right now, um, because these, everybody who is on my team, the Sweet Stampede, they get all my PDFs for free. So yesterday I sent them both of these PDFs. And if they want the class kits, they get them for, this one's $10 and this one's $12. So you can see what a huge discount that is. That's a huge, um, oh, I'm seeing you guys saying it's jittery. I'm sorry, guys. Well, hopefully on the replay, it won't be too bad. Um, so anyway, check that out. Let me know if you have questions. Um, celebration is the best time, of course, to purchase a starter kit because you get two extra stamp sets of your choice. It's completely customizable and you get everything that you want. The focus, focus function that's shaking. Ah, you guys, I don't know. I'm watching it on my iPad and I don't see it doing that. So maybe if I just stop picking things up. Um, let's do Prize Patrol. Last week is um, the Hello... Easter set that just showed you in that class. The winner, I've already emailed her. Donna, look for the email, and it's already packed and ready. I just have to put your address on there, and I'll get it out as soon as I hear back from you. This week, I have two really good prizes. Well, I don't know, you guys. I'm, I feel bad that you're saying it's jittery. Some people say it's fine. Some people say it's jittery. I don't know what that means, jittery, like it's going in and out of focus. I don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to fix that. Okay, let me tell you about um, Prize Patrol for this week. I'm going to give away one of my Paper Pumpkin Valentine kits. It is this month's um, Paper Pumpkin. It looks like this. It makes these cute little cards. I haven't made mine yet, but they also will hold candy. So that's prize number one. The entry is called Raffle Copter. It's a little widget on my blog. And so you have to go over there and enter before Thursday. And the second prize is pretty sweet too. The Sure Do Love You Bundle. That's a pretty good prize. Um, for those of you that don't have it yet. So if you go to enter um, for the giveaway, there's a question there that says, which prize would you prefer? If you already have this, then you probably want this. If you already have this you might want this so make sure you let me know and if you would prefer both of them let me know that too because some people may not have either and you would take either one so let me know that 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 way when I draw winners I can pick the prizes based on what that winner has asked for okay so hop over to my blog and enter to win those two really good prizes that this week one other thing I wanted to tell you guys this list, I went through everything you guys put on my um, um, prize patrol last week. One of the questions was, what would you like to see in a future uh, Facebook Friday? And there were lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, answers, but these were the, the most common ones. Brusho, Easter, yes, okay, I know you guys want Easter. Don't worry. Do, you don't even have to say that because you know I'm going to do Easter um, some Easter, some more Easter projects. The problem is right now there's no Easter candy out. There's very, very little. So I have to wait until all that comes out before I can really start designing um, Easter um, projects. What was out is what I made my class with. Um, so don't worry, Easter is coming. Lots of requests for the barn door. 
lots of requests for um, the fruit. Um, what do you call that? The Tutti Frutti. The Magical, that's the one with the mermaids. I haven't done anything with that yet. The apron, I got several of those, and I've even gotten emails about the apron. And St. Patrick's Day, same with Easter. I gotta wait until I can get some, some candy and stuff to make some St. Patrick's Day things. Birthdays, and then bubble over. So luckily, I have two classes, Easter and bubble over, if you can't wait. If you really want them right now, you can check those out. So just know that I, I do look at what you guys put. And these were the ones that had repeated answers. There were other things too um, that I took note of, but these were the ones that seemed to be the most popular. So today that question is there again. Let me know if you have other suggestions or if you want to vote for one of those things too. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So I'm going to do three Party Panda projects. That's kind of a mouthful. Three Party Panda projects. Remember the Party Pandas is in... The celebration catalog and the only way you can get it is when you spend fifty dollars you choose it as one of your free choices okay and for those of you that have just joined us welcome um i am trying something new this week i'd like for you guys to try to share this video i know it's in a group it's on a group page so i'm not sure if it'll share as easily as um as a business page but i would like to see if you guys can share it see how many shares we get and if you guys notice my new table I know. I like it. I'm not sure yet, though, so we'll have to see on the replay what it looks like. Just playing around with some things. I got some new lights, and that's kind of shiny, huh? I can't really see that. That's the hostess code. Remember that if you want these three projects in the mail for free, you need to put in a minimum $30 order using this hostess code by Monday night, and that's also on here, too. If you can't read it because of the glare, go over to my blog, print these out and download them. Download them and print them out, whichever and you'll be able to see it. Okay, okay, let's get started. The first one I'm gonna show you is a card, and I case this card um, on, based on a card I saw my very good friend, Angela McKay, make right after we got our hands on it. I think it was even before the catalog came out, and I saw someone just a few minutes ago say that you picked yours up from Angela, like, you're her customer in Canada, so yay. So I saw her do this and I was like, okay, cutest card ever, I have to make it. So mine's a little bit different than hers, but not too terribly different. Let me grab my paper and I'm going to stamp my panda first thing and I'm gonna stamp him in Memento Black. And the reason I chose Memento as opposed to just our regular black is because I'm also gonna use our Stampin' Blends. And when you use the Stampin' Blends, you have to use the Memento Black or it'll smear. Our regular black will smear. And I just wanna make sure I didn't get any ink there. And my pad seems to not be quite as juicy as it needs to be. So hopefully, let's see, we'll get this cute little panda stamped. Now the thing that is really cool about this card, you'll notice that the balloon sticks off of the circle. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Aunt, uh, Angela did something really cool with her circle framelit and I thought, okay, I have to try that. So once you have him stamped, you're gonna take your circle, whichever circle you wanna use, and I'm just barely with a pencil, I'm gonna just draw a little mark about where that circle will go, because that's how far I'm gonna fussy cut in just a minute. But before we do that, we're gonna finish our stamping and our coloring. I wanna do that before I get it um, cut out. So this is, hi, that's cute. And then we'll use our Stampin' Blends, the Calypso Coral Stampin' Blends to color in this little balloon. And we're gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting around the balloon, but it's not gonna be too terribly hard. I'm scared to color over this because I haven't given it a lot of time to dry. I like to give it a little extra time, these lighter colors especially, when I start to color them. All right, I'm gonna start with the light. I like to sit down when I color, so this is kind of tricky for me to do this. And I'm gonna take my dark Calypso and go along this side. And I'm gonna come back with my light, and I like to leave my markers open when I am coloring for easier and quicker action because they are a little bit um, tight and sometimes they're a little bit 
hard to get off and I don't want to waste any time because this alcohol ink dries very quickly. Not super quick, but you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta work if you want it to blend. So see how I did the left side of that balloon darker so that you could kind of see some, some, uh, some roundness to it, gives it a little more shape. All right, so now let me show you the fussy cutting. Oh, where are my tiny scissors? When I fussy cut, I prefer to do it with my tiny scissors. And I'm just gonna cut off some of this extra paper right here. And I'm gonna start right there where I drew that little tick mark, because that's where the circle's gonna go. And I'm gonna cut just on the outside of the black line. When I fussy cut, I like to stay right on the outside of the black line. That way, your eye is seeing the black line and not my jiggity jaggedy cuts, which are in the white. All right, so I'm gonna just barely go on the outside of that line like that. Okay, now be careful here. It's a little delicate. See how I've just cut that. Now we're gonna grab the big shot. Get everything out of the way. And I'm gonna use that circle. One thing, we, we made this card at my team meeting last month. And some we realize that you really do need to kind of make a tick mark wherever you're going to do that cut. Because otherwise you might cut down too far or not far enough and cut off some of that extra. The balloon is gonna go on the top of the circle. At the very top. Looks like I need to cut down just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Ah. This is hard to do when I know everybody's watching. All right, let's see. So, and it's very skinny, so be super careful. Oh, come on. All right, let me cut in a little bit more. I'm scared, I'm scared. You guys are watching, what's gonna happen? All right, I'm gonna cut in like that, but I'm not gonna cut it all the way off. All right, so put the balloon on top of the framelit and slide the framelit down. There we go, there we go. Can you guys see how it goes over the framelit right there? And the circle is gonna cut everything behind the balloon. I hope you guys can see the framelit. The balloon is on top of the framelit. Now, yes, I know this is quite brilliant, but again, I did not invent this, and I think this was actually some kind of presentation they did on stage, and I missed it. So see how that did that? Isn't that so cute? I know, who thinks of these things? All right, now, if I don't rip my balloon off, oh, and I just ripped it off. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. That's the second time that's happened to me because it's so delicate. All right, I cut, well, goodness, what else is going to go wrong today, you guys? Fast fuse, ran out. Let me grab one. In case you've never seen a fast fuse change, this is how you do it. If you're like me, you get gunk right here because you're a messy fast fuser. So always make sure that's pulled off. Right there, and you always have to make sure these three pegs are still there because if these three pegs break off, you gotta start over with a new case. All right, there we go. All right, so a Calypso Coral Scallop and a basic black stitch circle. Aw, so sad, his balloon, it floated away. <laughs> That's all right, we'll fix it. I guess you could just do that, right? And then just and cut it out and put it back on like I'm gonna do. Oh well, I was trying to be fancy. All right, here is some of the Bubbles and Fizz Designer Series paper. This also is something you get for free with a $50 purchase. And I'm gonna do some of these little sprinkles over here along the side, because he's really cute and he's like having a party. I don't know. 
It's not a birthday card, but you could still have a party. All right, so let's do this with some dimensionals. Now we're going to pretend like, oh, look, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, well, you guys get it, right? You can do it at home. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fine tip glue pen. And you know, I didn't need this, but I thought, hmm, I'll just take that over there. And we'll just set that right there and it'll dry. And you'll never know that it ripped off. All right, so here it is. It's kind of anticlimactic. You got to put the ribbon on too. I'll let it dry and I'll come back. And we'll put the ribbon on, okay? Sad little panda. Pandy as my daughter called them. Sad little pandy. Oh, stay there, you silly balloon. It's a fun concept. I mean, you can look at your other stamps and see where else you could do this, where you could fussy cut around something and then slip it above a framelit. I think it's a really cool idea and I need to play with it more. Oh, this card is just breaking my heart right now. Sad. If you guys weren't watching, I would totally start over. But we don't have time for that. I gotta pick my kids up today. The ribbon that we're using is also celebration ribbon. Lots of celebration things on this card. It is, it's three different colors and it's beautiful. It's shimmery and three different widths. This is the Bermuda Bay. And then this is, I don't know if they, I can't even remember. Are they calling this black or, or basic gray? It's like a dark, dark gray. And then this is the Calypso ribbon that we'll use on that card. We'll come back to it. We'll revisit. All right, now the next card is also inspired by a Canadian friend of mine, Rosemary Coleman, posted somewhere recently on Facebook how she took her stripes, stylish stripes, is that what it's called? Stylish, that doesn't sound right, let me look. Simple stripes, simple stripes, textured impressions, embossing folder, and she made like a checkered embossing. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh yes, have to do that, so, so cute. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start with that embossing technique. And this embossing folder, you might think it's pretty simple and might not catch your eye, but I like simple embossing folders. I don't care for them when they're super busy. So just some regular stripes really appeals to me. Now when you're embossing, you need to use your regular platform without the extra sheet. If you have the old style, you need to open it up. And we're gonna use this. This is one of our larger six by six embossing folders. And I'm just gonna put it on here. And I'm gonna attempt to line it up with those stripes. Just like that. All right, we're gonna run it through one time. And then we're gonna take it and turn it. What is this, 90 degrees, like that. And this time I'm gonna make sure I'm, see I try to keep it lined up with one of those lines to keep it straight, to keep those embossed lines straight. All right. And right through here. And let's see, look at that. It's checkered. Don't you love that? Cute. I'm gonna play around with that too. I think maybe we could do some, I'm um, using some ink on that embossing folder and make, make it look like gingham, which I absolutely love. All right, let's start building this card. I'm gonna put this just on a Whisper White thick cardstock base. And this paper, we're not using that side with the Kiwis, we're using the black and white side. This is the paper from the Tutti Frutti stack. And remember you guys, the measurements are all on the product sheet there on my blog. Everyone is welcome to go download it for free. You can download it and you can print it or you can save it for future reference. Okay, let's stamp this cutie. This one, I think this is my favorite panda. My favorite pandy in the set. He's holding a little envelope with a heart. And again, I'm using the Memento because I'm gonna use one of my blends. All right, let's see. We're gonna put him about 
a little bit towards the top. See how I left some space so I could do the sentiment right there? All right, and then I'm gonna use my Cherry Cobbler blend just to color that in. You could use your regular marker too. That's such a tiny little spot. Another thing I'm gonna do is take my Wink of Stella and make him sparkly. This idea I got from my downline, Anne Marie. I don't know if Anne Marie is on here watching, but when she first got her panda, she put Wink of Stella on him. And he's so cute, sparkly. So Wink of Stella is the perfect way to add sparkle without getting glitter all over yourself. All right, there we go. And we're gonna stamp that little sentiment that says, love you just there in the corner in real red. Um, I do want to point out that I used real red instead of cherry cobbler because I think that the light cherry cobbler blend is closer to real red anyway. So that's why I chose real red. Okay, so now let's put some ribbon. This ribbon is a very, very nice ribbon. It's our organza ribbon, white. I would love for them to come back in, with, in the next catalog with di this in different colors. It's very pretty and it's light and it ties well. And I, it doesn't make your card too bulky, I don't think. All right, so a little bow off to the side. And then last but not least, we're gonna put our little panda on with some dimensionals. I'm gonna put one at the top and two at the bottom. Oh, there's Anne Marie. Yep, Anne Marie, I got that idea from you. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. Right there. And there you have it. And if you didn't wanna do love you, you could also do the high, you know, the sentiment. If you didn't wanna do a love you card, like. For Valentine's or something. He feels crooked. Is he crooked? There we go. Okay, project number two. Remember, you guys, I always send out my make and takes for free, all three of them, with a minimum $30 order. And you got to use the hostess code. That way I know that you are watching Facebook Friday and you want the projects for free in the mail. Unless, you know what, let me let me remind you, unless your order is over $50, I'm sorry, $150, because at $150, you get hostess rewards, and I would rather you get the hostess rewards. Um, so if, you, if your order is over $150, take advantage of those um, stampin' rewards, and then I will still send you the projects for free. Okay, third project is a 3D, and it's a slider, and inside are... Hershey Nuggets. Our Hershey Nuggets are just one of those things we cannot stop using. I feel like stampers and crafters, we love to make them. So a little slider box. All right, let me show you how to make it. You're gonna need two pieces of Bermuda Bay cardstock. And let me look at my notes so that I score it in the right place. See right here on the sheet, it tells you exactly the measurements that you need and what size you're gonna score them. All right, so we're gonna start, let's start with a bigger one. Let me look, now let's start with a smaller one. This one is four, no, no, this one is five and a half by three inches. And we're gonna score each side at three fourths of an inch. So I'm gonna score it and turn it, 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 okay? The second one measures four by five and a fourth. And we're gonna score the long side at seven eighths, two and three eighths, three and a fourth, and four and three fourths. And then the short side, let's see, nothing. I'm looking at my notes. Wait, where are my notes? Long side and four and three fourths. We don't, what am I? No, that's right, that's right, nothing on the short side just the long side because that's the outside of the slider box. All right, so let's make the bottom first. This was the first piece that I scored and we're gonna cut these side score lines 
And we are gonna cut these at an angle, these little end tabs, just cut them right in half, diagonally, okay, whoops. And actually, it would probably be better if my diagonal went the other way, like this. So when you do yours, it'll work either way, but I'll show you why in a minute. Do it like that. Cut them at a diagonal, and that helps to put your sides together so that they match perfectly. So when I fold these in, you can see how that might be a little bit taller, but because I score, I cut it, it's going to be perfect. You guys see that? And then over here, this one, it is still going to line up just like that. It takes some of that bulk off. It's just two different ways to do it. All right, I'm going to put adhesive on the outside of these tabs. Like that. And fold them right in, just like that. All right, and so there's the bottom of your box. I'm gonna make sure all of those are scored in nicely. And four of these Hershey nuggets, this is what the nugget bag looks like. And it's right there with the Hershey Kisses and everything else in the regular candy. And I'm gonna cover them with that Bubbles and Fizz paper. These are one by three. And you just wrap them around like that. All right, so there's one. I don't know why we love these nuggets so much. I feel like we're always doing something with nuggets. I think because they have a flat bottom and they sit well in a box. But if you look on Pinterest, Hershey Nugget Holder, you will literally find thousands of different ways to hold these, to decorate them, things to make. Whoops, let me put a little more on that. And one more. When I first started making this, I was just gonna do a holder for two nuggets. But then I realized it was so small that the the panda bear like was covered everything up. So I thought, let's make it longer. All right, so there they are in the holder. And this thing, it's kind of like a matchbox. It slides. Why does that feel like yeah, that's right. Okay, one of the sides is bigger. Suddenly, that didn't look right to me. You're going to put adhesive on the tab that is a little bit smaller, and then we're going to match those edges up like that. And then, this is going to slide in here. And it is a tight fit, so you have to wiggle it to get it in, but it should fit just right, okay? All right, now before we finish that part, let's do all the other parts. Let's put this designer series paper. This is but the Bubbles and Fizz paper, and it measures one by three. And I'm just gonna put that right there on the front. And then I have already cut, these are the same sizes from the first card, the stitch circle and the scalp circle. Um, and I've done them in Lemon Lime Twist. We're gonna layer these, get ready for our panda. So you see it's gonna go like that, but we have to stamp and cut out our panda first. This is the party panda. He's so cute, where's my ink? Here it is. He's the birthday panda, he has a party hat on. Memento ink because I am gonna use my blends. And I'm gonna stamp him right in the middle. I'm gonna give him just a few seconds to dry before I actually color him. And I'm gonna stamp the happy birthday on a strip. Oops, I don't like that. Let's see, I had one strip that was skinnier than the other. I think this is a skinnier one. Let's see, there we go. And I cut one side at an angle like that and one like that. All right. Now let's get in, we're gonna get that same circle we used in the very first project, and we're gonna cut him out. So let me bring the big shot back over. And I'm gonna switch back over to my magnetic platform so it'll hold the circle in place where we need it. I hope it's not glitchy still, you guys. If it is, when I upload the 
the replay, the recording. It always asks me if I want to upload it in HD, and I do. So hopefully, if it gets really glitchy, um, just know that the, the replay will be better. And you can come back and watch it if you need to. All right, so he just barely squeezes in there. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the Bermuda Bay for his the polka dots. And then I'm gonna use pool party. I think I'm gonna use pool party light to go in between those. So cute. Now I have a bunch of samples to show you guys, so don't leave yet. I have like 12 other projects to show you that I've gotten in swaps and that I've made for other classes. All right, we're going back with a Wink of Stella. Once you go glittery on him, it seems like I can't go back. I can't have a normal panda. They all have to be glittery. Maybe, Amory, you should make one with a tiara too. Amory's always trying to get me to put, get a tiara for our team. I don't know, maybe the panda needs a tiara. Okay, now let's layer him up. Oh my gosh, Mary, your husband went out to get some nuggets. That's funny. That is cute. All right, right there. And then I'm going to use a little mini dimensional on the little birthday banner. And I'm just going to do it across like that. There we go. Okay, let's finish him up. This is that lemon lime twist mini striped ribbon. That's a mouthful. And we're gonna wiggle it into the box with that ribbon around it. I'm gonna tie it once it's in there. It'll be easier to tie that way. All right. Now, let's tie a bow. And I, I don't know who said a minute ago about ribbon. It just takes lots and lots of practice. Just practice tying bows. And look up videos on YouTube. Um, that's how I learned how to tie a bow a million years ago there was a girl who did a, a video and it was it was just really easy to watch her hands so give it a try practice all right there we go now let's put this on here this would make a great you could keep these you know on hand for work when there's somebody's birthday you can go give them a little treat or even as a teacher, I would give my kids something on their birthday. That would be a cute little treat for, for a student. All right. That is that. I hope you guys liked that one. I think that, of course, that is my favorite of the three because I'm always liking 3Ds. All right, let's go back to this naughty panda over here. Let's pretend that it's lined up perfectly and I didn't accidentally rip it off. And let's put some ribbon on him. This is that celebration ribbon. If I can, do you guys have trouble getting these off? I can never get my ribbon open by just pulling that tab. I hope it's not just me. All right, I love when the ribbon perfectly matches, don't you? That's the best part of stamping up is all the coordination, all the matching colors. You never have to guess or use something that's just kind of close. Oh, don't. Okay, let me go slow so I can show you. So I put it around the inside of the card, and I put one under the other, and then I'm gonna make sure that they're flat. So I'm gonna twist this ribbon a little bit to make sure that it's flat right there. And then loop, loop, and pull it through. And when you pull it through, make sure it doesn't twist. See, mine's wanting to twist. You're wanting it to stay flat and going the same direction. There we go. And then you can adjust your little ends. Whoa, what was that? All right, there we go. There's the naughty panda with its twin, the one that behaved. And then here's the, the cool embossing. All right, so don't leave. I told you, don't leave. Here are today's three projects. Remember, use the hostess code by Monday night, and I will send you all three of these make and takes for free in the mail next week. All right, now I have, I went around and collected all of my panda projects and I wanna just kinda of go through. Um, this one, 
Um, I'm reading your comments. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This one is something I did recently for a team training, and it holds a little Twix. Maybe we'll have some something similar soon. But see how I did the love you, love you, love you, love you down the side? And then just did, he's the one with the envelope, and I just did a die cut heart. All right, here's one. Now, these are swaps. Oh, this is my friend Rhonda Wade's swap. And she actually cut that out and popped it up. She hand cut it. I can see she stamped it regular and then stamped it again, colored it, and cut it out and popped it up. Here's one. I love how they use the celebrate on that paper. Oh, and look, they even added a paper balloon. Christine Polly, that's her card. Um, this one is one I did on my blog a while back. It, I added that epoxy sticker. And I used this paper from the Tutti Frutti because I thought it kind of looked like bamboo. At the zoo in Memphis where my parents live, we always go visit the pandas there at their zoo. And they have tons of bamboo all over the place. And um, that um, is what they eat. They eat tons of bamboo. So uh, that's what I went with that one. Here's one. This was one of my downline swaps. No name on it. But isn't that cute? Look, they cut the, the bottles from the uh, Bubbles and Fizz paper and made a little party. So cute. Here's one of my calendars that I did at the beginning of the year. The little desktop calendar you see. And I used the Starburst Punch in the back. Here's a really cute one. And I don't know who this is. This is also, I believe, one of my downline swaps. She added some cute little hearts with that red glimmer paper. This one is a team swap also, and look inside, she has a little snack. It's like a little matchbook. This tucks in. Very cute. You see that? Very cute. I don't know whose that is. If you guys are watching it, it's yours. You better tell me. Loading error. Again, you guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what that's about. And then here's a sneak peek um, of my stamp club, their card, coming up in February. He's glittery, too. I don't know. Can you guys tell? He's glittery. Okay, that's it for me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Remember, if you want the three projects, go over and um, put it in an order by Monday night. I always have to think about that. Monday night, using this hostess code, make sure you download and print out your project sheets and the big prize patrol this week. Where did it go? Remember, I'm giving away, if you weren't here at the beginning, I'm giving away both a paper pumpkin kit from, Feb from January and a bundle. So go over and enter, and I will announce the winner during next week's Facebook Friday. And let me know what you guys want to see on Facebook Friday, okay? Thanks so much for watching, and let me know if you have questions, and I will talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.